Hello, everybody. This is the lesson for Friday, January 15th. And it's going to pick up right where we left off. We talked about subduction zones at the very end of Thursday's lesson. That's a super, super, super important concept. Okay? All right. Subduction means carried under. Sub, you guys get under. That means under or down. Duct means to carry. Okay? I don't know if you ever heard of an air duct. It carries air from your air conditioning or your furnace or whatever. Okay? Subduct means to drag down. Okay? And a subduction zone is important on Earth because that's where 80% of Earth's volcanoes are created at subduction zones. Okay? So, start a, start some notes. You don't have very many on, you don't have much writing today. It's going to be drawing. And you're going to want colored pencils. And I'm going to cheat. Sometimes I'll use pens into pens also, but colored pencils. If you're at home and you don't have colored pencils, you can steal some of mine from school and take them home with you. They're not very expensive. Pick some up at Walmart or somewhere online. <laughs> All right. So, if a teacher tells you something more than once, it's important. Okay? Subduction zones are important. So, I'm writing that down here on today's notes and tell you to tell you 80% dude that's most of them 80% of volcanoes are created at subduction zones I'm just gonna do the at symbol and you can abbreviate subduction zones SZ on quizzes and in your notes okay subduction zones Okay, so th this makes more sense for, for people. I think I'll write subduction zones out and write SZ behind it. All right. Now, find the art packet that I gave you. It looks like this. I took these, I took the staple out, but looks like this it's page one page two page three okay so you don't have much writing now it's going to be uh adding arrows and labels and a little bit of coloring okay and you're not coloring because you're dumb little kids you're coloring because it's more stimulating to your brain it'll help make more sense okay that's the same reason we use different colors on traffic signs okay they're not all black and white all right, here we go. I'm gonna, on your, it wouldn't hurt in case I do a note check soon for you to write, just write your name in there and the date is the 15th. All right. So, first things first. There's three basic ways that two chunks of Earth's skin can interact. If you got two chunks of skin here, okay, they they can either be running into each other, that's colliding, okay, or they can be ripping apart from each other, tearing apart, or they can just be minding their own business and just try, and this is going to be a different view, trying to go beside each other, different directions, okay, so they can run into each other, they can pull apart, or they can just go side by side. Those are the three basic ways, okay, colliding, spreading. And the fancy term for going side by side is transform or strike slip. Now, you're like, strike slip, that sounds weird, okay? They run into each other and they kind of lock up, okay? They, they, the example we're gonna use in this class is, I have trouble getting my hands under the camera here. If you make two fists and you lock your knuckles together and you try to slide one hand this way and the other hand the other, the knuckles lock up and they won't let it slide. This is strike slip, where I'm trying to make one hand go one way and one hand go the other, and all of a sudden it lets go. That's strike slip. Okay? All right. Now, I'm going to use red because it shows up nicely. Um, 
different people, different videos, different textbooks will use different words for colliding. You can also hear, hear it called convergent. And spreading boundaries can be called divergent. It, it's the same thing. I mean, these are the same thing. These are the same thing. Divergent. I don't know if you ever watched the weird movie Divergent. Okay. So all, all three types have two different names. Colliding, convergent, spreading, divergent. And this one, transform or strike slip. Okay. Now, on these drawings that we're going to work on together... I use O for ocean crust and C for continental crust. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use black for ocean crust, just like this. So make yourself a little black rectangle with a black colored pencil. You can use regular boring gray pencil if you want. In continental crust, I'm going to use brown. Okay, not because they're those aren't exciting colors, but they're realistic. Okay, um, I'll show you why. Ocean crust is usually black basalt, and continental crust is usually gray, brownish granite. These are here; they are in in a chunk of rock that was left here by a glacier. This is basalt with an igneous intrusion of granite. Okay, all right, that's why I use black and, and brown. All right, here we go with the coloring. Nice thing about doing this on YouTube is you can stop this and you know rewind if I say something that doesn't make sense or if I say something that goes, that goes too quickly. Okay, all right. So take your black and color in ocean crust, black or gray, like this. What you've got here in this diagram is two chunks of ocean crust running into each other. This is an OO colliding, okay? An ocean crust and an ocean crust running into each other. So do this. Now, you realize I could just give you a color photocopy that was already done, but you would learn less. He's tricking us into making a textbook. Yep. All right. And so you can still see the labeling. Okay. I'm going to put in some ocean water here. You should know what that deep spot is. Ask yourself, okay, self, what do we call those deep spots in the world's oceans? It's a trench. We spent a lot of time yesterday talking about the Tonga Trench. That. All right. Now, I'm going to use red for magma. Now, I guess I'll use green because it shows up well. This is the subduction zone. You can write SZ if you want. I'm going to write subduction zone. Now, this thing, this is the loser. The two that ran into each other, this is the winner. This is the loser. Because in the collision, this one is being driven down where it will be melted and destroyed. Okay, I'm going to use, let's see, I'll use green. It's going this way and this way. And then this one is going, it's going down. Okay. Now, you should remember what happens here at the edge. Okay. This is, a, this is the end of this sheet. You're looking at a side view, okay? This melts. Okay? This is a huge slab, miles and miles and miles thick, solid rock, 
of this stuff, this black stuff, really, really hard and strong, okay? Being forced to bend, it doesn't want to bend, and it'll crack and break, snap, crackle, pop. Um, there's sand and other, you know, mud and junk on the bottom of the, of the ocean, lots of water. It gets dragged down into here too, and when you heat up water, you get steam, and that's going to help the volcanoes explode. The steam is the explosive part of it, okay? Here is this melted rock and melted sand and gook and dead stuff. All this is being melted. This is um, liquid rock magma that's thinner than this magma, and it melts its way. It, it's less dense, so it rises, okay? And then we get a volcano. Now, not all volcanoes even make it up to the top. There's underwater volcanoes that we can't even see. Okay? Okay, now here's one of my favorite questions I ask. Why doesn't the ocean water put out the fire? I'll give you a second to think about it. Why doesn't all this ocean put out the fire? The answer, it's not fire. Okay? The ocean is not going to stop this. Okay? If it erupts long enough, eventually the volcano will be a big enough blister to stick up out of the water, and then you have a volcanic island. Okay? Volcanoes can erupt under the water all the time. Most of them do. When they get big enough, they can stick their head out. Okay? So there's, there's a volcanic eruption. Okay? This is like the Tonga Islands. Okay? So you can write whatever color you want. Example, Tonga Islands. How am I doing on time? I'm already at almost 12 minutes, okay? Are there earthquakes here? Think about it. Yeah, lots of them, yes, okay? Are there volcanoes? Uh, yeah, okay? So we just did one, one drawing, okay? We have two chunks of ocean crust running into each other. Now we're gonna do another colliding boundary. This time, we're going to run two chunks of continent into each other. Okay. Now for this one, grab your brown. Continental crust is brown. I mean, it, in the way I do it. You don't have to be super fancy. Or, okay, I'm just doing this in a hurry. Two chunks of continent have slammed into each other. And look at the crumple marks. But look at how much different this drawing is than the one up above. Okay? Com they acted completely differently. Okay? Now, what you need, the concept you need to get is about density. Okay? The stuff that is less dense floats on top of stuff that's more dense. Okay? So, ocean crust is very dense basalt rock. Continental crust is less dense stuff, especially granite. Granite is less dense than basalt, and that, that density difference means the collisions are act completely differently, okay? Now, you've got magma under here. We're writing magma and magma. Okay? These two chunks of ocean crust were dragged along. They're riding on top of floating magma. I mean, swirling magma, not floating magma. These two huge chunks of continental crust were mining their own business and got slammed into each other. But they don't go down enough to melt. There's no volcanoes here. Okay? They go up. They make really tall mountain ranges. Okay? So... Would you, do you think you'd have earthquakes where you have t all this collision? Yeah, really bad earthquakes. Um, earthquakes that have killed 20, 30, 40, 50,000. I think the world record is almost a million people have died in a single earthquake in, in Asia, okay? Uh, imagine living in mountains, steep mountains and having a terrible earthquake and then you know rock slides and your house is destroyed and okay so lots of earthquakes no volcanoes let me show you where something like this can happen
Okay. You've got India running in, India's this plate, running into Asia, this plate. Tons of earthquakes and the world's most famous mountain range. Okay. The Americans say Himalayas. Most people in the world say Himalayas. Uh, Americans can make things, words sound pretty ugly sometimes. Himalayas. Okay. Himalayas is the way most people say it, but whatever. Himalayas. Nice tall mountains. N not known for its volcanic. There's no volcanoes in this kind of collision. Okay. There isn't any melting. All right. We're making progress. Okay. Now. So we did two chunks of ocean hitting each other, two chunks of continent hitting each other. What's the third type? There's only one other type combination possible. One of each hitting each other. Okay. An ocean plate hitting a continental plate. Okay. I'm looking at the time. We're at 16 minutes. I'm shooting for about 26, 27 minutes. Okay. I don't have to do any Google Meets today because it's a Friday. So I'm grabbing my black for ocean crust. Hopefully you can start predicting what's going to happen here. You should start recognizing, oh, hey, I know what's going to, he's going to add to this drawing. Because you should recognize what's happening right here. We got another loser. Okay. And here's the winner. The reason that one is because it's so, it's so much less dense, it can't sink. Okay. Now. I, remember, I told you I was weird. It's the very first thing you ever heard about me. Okay? Most people like hot chocolate. Okay? Most people like hot chocolate. And most people like marshmallows with their hot chocolate. I'm weird. I like to play die marshmallow die when I have my hot chocolate. So I'll have hot chocolate and I'll put some marshmallows in there. And then, you know, of course, they, they float like crazy. But I stab them with my spoon and try to get them, try to hold them down underneath so they melt faster. And then, you know, they pop right back up. So the dye marshmallow dies when, you know, you have to keep trying to stab it with a spoon, which is not a very good stabber. Okay. This is the marshmallow. It's not going to sink. Okay. Imagine having a hot summer day and you're in a pool. You have a big chunk of styrofoam. You could, if you have a big enough piece, you could lay on top of it, okay? Like a, like one of those inflatable pool mattresses things, okay? Okay? So think about f how float, how much styrofoam likes to float in water. What would happen if you broke it? Would it sink then? No. Now you got a mess because you got all those little styrofoam beads, but all that styrofoam is still going to continue to float because it's still less dense than water, okay? This is less dense than this. And they're both less dense than this stuff. Okay? Um, if you think of this drawing, the most dense stuff of all is this. We're, we're, right now we're doing drawings out here where with water and rock, which are less dense than this stuff, which is less dense than this stuff. We're doing, we care about this out here because this is where we live on the outside. All right. So, You've got magma circulating like this. Okay, we've got what's happening right here. And you've got another ocean crust dying, subduction zone. You can write SZ. What's happening at the end of it? Volcanoes. Okay, this is melted rock and boiled ocean and seashells and all that stuff has been completely destroyed. And lots of carbon dioxide and water. Okay, very, 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 very dangerous and explosive. Okay. Okay, now, you 
You have very tall mountains and volcanoes. Ooh, extra yummy. Okay. Some of the most famous ones of those are along this boundary. We've got earthquakes and volcanoes and the um, least respected great mountain range in the world, the Andes. Okay, hang on a second. You like these? The Andes. These are really yummy little chocolate and mints. But notice the, the symbol, the Andes. Okay, so you got great big mountain range with regular mountains mixed in with volcanoes. So here we go. Example, Andes, which that's the edge of South America. Earthquakes, oh yeah. Some of the biggest earthquakes in world history. Like 9.2, I think, on the Richter scale. Okay. Volcanoes, yeah, lots. Okay. Um, now, did you notice anything else in this drawing? Super deep water right next to the, co to the coast. A trench, not out in the middle of the ocean, right next to the coast. So on Earth, this will be where you can find the greatest difference between the highest mountains and the lowest spots in the ocean, only a few miles apart. Okay, That's miles above sea level, and this will be miles below sea level. All right, trench. Is there anything else you need on that one? Okay. All right, so we just did all of the colliding boundaries. We did ocean, ocean, continent, continent, and the third one was ocean hitting a continent. Okay, this is extremely dangerous, this combination here. You've got high mountains with snow on them, by the way. So you can have uh, snow avalanches and rock slides and mud slides and earthquakes near the water can make tsunamis. Oh, this is a very dangerous place to live right here. And people will choose to live here because there's amazing deep sea fishing right offshore. You don't have to go miles and miles and miles and miles away from home for the deep water and great big fish, but you're living in a very dangerous, you're living on the bottom of uh, volcanoes and great big mountains in, in an earthquake zone. All right, when we uh, get to... Uh, some scary, sad videos, you're going to see people dying in areas like this. All right, on that lovely note, okay, now we're going to go to spreading boundaries. This is where the world rips apart, okay? And the first thing we're going to do is an ocean plate ripping apart, leaving another ocean plate. So I'm going to grab my black. Watching the clock, I'm at 23 minutes. Okay. Now this is, I'm recording this for Friday. And then I, when this video is done here in a couple minutes, I'm just gonna keep on going and record Monday's video because we're gonna continue this art packet. We'll get two for the price of one because it's supposed to be quite a bit of snow tonight and I don't want to feel like coming back over here tomorrow. All right, so here's, Two chunks of ocean crust. I'm gonna write ocean in there. And ocean. And I'm gonna put the water on it. That little spot there in the middle is kind of cool. All right. Now, remember, this is where the world is ripping apart. It's actually growing, okay? In the, the first three examples, it was where the world is losing some of its skin, it's recycling it. This is where new skin is being created, okay? On the first three drawings, I kept, you had arrows that were coming toward each other. Now, this is the opposite. This is where Magma is going in opposite directions like that, away from each other, magma. And some of it, of course, is trying to get out, okay? And let's see, would you have earthquakes here? Yes. 
Will you have volcanoes? Yes. Now, I'm going to grab my brown just because it'll be consistent. This, see where this area is pushed up? This whole thing is called a ridge. As in, whoop, 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 the Mid Atlantic Ridge, which is found in the middle of the Atlantic. This thing. Notice the arrows are going away from each other. Okay? The middle of the Atlantic Ridge. Now, the thing right in the very middle of it is called a rift. Right there. Ridges have rifts. R I F T. Like that. Okay? Example, Mid-Atlantic Ridge. I better stop there. It's at 26 minutes already. Okay, let's see. Do I want to stop? Let me show you this video clip. It happens because hot rock rises, heated by the Earth's core. Near the surface, the rock spreads in two directions and goes sideways. That's a ridge. It begins to lose heat. There's a subduction Eventually, zone. Eventually, the much cooler rock sinks back down. Through this spreading process, the Earth's crust That's the ridge. very slowly dragged apart. That's the subduction and it's zone. This that ultimately causes the continents to move. Where the plates collide, the rock subduction the zone floor containing carbon from the dead plankton is carried deep into the earth. As it descends, this layer of rock is heated, so the rock melts, releasing carbon dioxide. Kerblooey! And gas is returned back into the atmosphere, 